Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us in this .NET Com session on monitoring of containerized .NET applications in Azure. My name is Yi Gu. I'm a product manager in the Azure Developer Experience Platform team. I'm here with my colleagues, Scott Kinghorn and Coyote Prince from the Azure Monitor team. Today, we will be discussing how Azure makes it easy for you to instrument your applications store and process telemetry data, and get actionable insights. Azure provides multiple options for running containers in the cloud. From a single container, to container orchestration, to serverless, you can find a hosting option that works best for your application needs. If you're containerizing your applications, chances are you're already thinking about scaling. Containers simplifies the task of componentizing your applications into microservices that can be deployed, managed, and scaled independently. In a typical AKS application, you will have tens of stateless and stateful components that interacts with each other through APIs and network protocols. There are many aspects or elements of this application deployment that you'll want to watch over. Everything from network traffic to pod utilization to cluster health to application performance, just to name a few. That's a lot to take care of. So how would you do all that for this, I'm going to turn to Scott, who will talk about his thoughts on how you can utilize Azure services and .NET tooling to implement these. So over to you, Scott. OK. With monitoring your AKS cluster, there's a number of different things to consider. So why monitor a Kubernetes environment? It's an extremely powerful platform for developing modern distributed applications. But with this power comes a lot of complexity. Monitoring will help you keep track of the health and performance of your cluster, the nodes, pods, and the services that make up your applications. It will help you identify and address issues before your applications are impacted. And when they are affected, these tools can be used to find the root cause and take action to correct them. As your AKS cluster grows to handle the increased capabilities of your applications and your services, your monitoring will allow you to understand the impact of these changes, how it affects your application performance, and allow you to optimize your cluster while planning for continued growth. When fully adopted, monitoring can enable proactive observability so that you're aware of potential issues before it, impact, it impacts and affects your experience and the end users. While at the same time, these tools can help you reduce the total cost of ownership of these systems. We can move on. There we are. The four pillars of observability. So with these, we'll start with metrics. That's where the journey begins. It's where most of the customers will, will start with their monitoring tools. These can give you an insight into the performance and health of your services. You can create your key performance indicators, You'll look at response time, throughput, and resource utilization. The next of these tools is your logs. The logs will let you get more details into the behavior systems, the errors, warnings, and events. It'll help you with troubleshooting and understanding your system behavior, looking at both trends and patterns over time. Alerts are then used to notify your team when certain conditions are met. These can be created on both metrics and logs, making your operators aware of resource outages and helping you manage the health and performance of your system with the goal of preventing downtime. And traces are the fourth of these. Traces will give you details about the behavior of a particular request. So as your microservices grow and your environment becomes more complex, traces become an essential tool for tracking down issues in this environment. So Azure Observability has a full stack of tools that you can use to monitor this environment. 
It is our unified cloud native offering covering the four pillars we just discussed. For metrics, we have managed Prometheus. For logs, we have container insights with log analytics. With alerts, we have our Azure Monitor alerts platform that can let you define these alert rules, either KQL or PromQL and in other uh, different areas where we have data sets. For traces, we have application insights and visualization can be done throughout the portal, the Azure portal or within Azure Managed Grafana. With Azure Monitor Managed Service for Prometheus, what you have is a fully managed, highly scalable Prometheus. This managed service includes both the data store on the back end, a rules engine, and our managed AKS add-on to scrape the data sets from your AKS cluster. With this set of tools, you can leverage the Prometheus ecosystem without having the overhead of administrating these systems as they scale and grow. By using our lightweight collector on your AKS cluster or remote write from your own self-managed Prometheus, you can send data into our service. Out of the box with our AKS add-on, we have a default scrape configuration that will collect the common data sets from your Kubernetes cluster. We also have default recording rules defined so that it will power the dashboards that we can create on your behalf inside of Azure Managed Grafana. Container Insights is our solution for collecting your logs. It will help you understand the behavior and performance of your containers. It will help you with the troubleshooting as well as a look into your live log data. You can use these tools from either the portal or even via CLI. You can run your queries directly, either in Container Insights or in Log Analytics directly. And you can help then drill down into the workload details and better understand the issues and help identify root causes. So Container Insights includes an out-of-the-box visualization for both performance and health, and has a rich environment to help you drill down into details in a particular area. When it comes to application monitoring, we have two primary models that are available to you at this point. The first being application insights. And it's the recommended option for application metrics and traces across several different types of Azure resources beyond just.net. It's a robust experience in the portal and it's integrated with Azure Managed Grafana. The other option that you have really is with Managed Prometheus. And if you wanna send your metric data into Managed Prometheus, you have to look at a different way of doing this. And you, if you go this route, you will get access to the Prometheus environment and ecosystem where you can query that data with PromQL. So if you go down the option or the route with application insights, you can leverage a couple of different options and ways of instrumenting your application. It does not use managed Prometheus at this time as the backend data store. One of the options that you have for instrumenting your application is to use the classic API from Application Insights. This works with ASP.NET. It can either have auto instrumentation or manual instrumentation. The classic API also has support for worker services, background tasks, and console applications. The other option you have with Application Insights is our OTEL distribution, which supports .NET and is currently in public preview. There's also instrument, auto instrumentation features for the AKS apps using the OTEL distro, and it's currently in private preview. And if there's interest in that, feel free to reach out to the team and we can provide more details. The other option we discussed for collecting your application metrics from .NET would be using um, Prometheus itself. The Prometheus project has a the Prometheus.NET SDK that allow you to capture this data and send it into Managed Prometheus. It has uh, rich support for uh, instrumenting your applications. We do have a few recommendations here, and later on, um, we'll share some links into an example .NET application that's set up with Prometheus.NET SDK that you can take a look at. Um, once you have set this up, you'll just need to update your scrape configuration for your AKS cluster 
to collect this data, and then it will be routed into Manage Prometheus. To note, this does not cover traces, which is included with the Application Insights option. So if you want to collect traces as well, you can look at using Application Insights solely for that purpose or other tools such as Zipkin. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Yi. Now that you have collected all that data in Azure Monitor, how do you view it? This is where Azure Managed Grafana comes in. Grafana is a visualization platform that's available as both open source and commercial software. Azure Managed Grafana uses a licensed commercial version of Grafana called Grafana Pro that comes with additional features designed for enterprises. As a fully managed service, Azure Managed Grafana provides high availability and stays up to date with Grafana releases and security patches. Yeah, also is certified for different government as well as industry standards, such as ISO, SOC, and PCI. Beyond hosting, Azure Managed Grafana delivers an optimized experience for Azure. It supports key Azure data stores as sources. It provides billing dashboard for billing telemetries from popular Azure services that's ready for you to use out of the box. And it integrates with the Azure portal so that you can bring over your existing charts from the portal with one click. In addition, it adds numerous security enhancements. Intra-ID and Azure RBAC support allows you to manage credentials and access more simply and consistently. With end-to-end -end user base authentication, you can control who can access to your data sources down to a particular user. And network isolation with both private link on the front end, as well as managed private endpoint on the back end, allows you to restrict all network communications to your private VNet. Azure Managed Grafana has been in GA for just over a year, and it's been growing fast. We're excited uh, to announce that we are adding a brand new SKU called Essential that provides additional cost optimization for a subset of our customers. The Essential SKU is tailored specifically for the Azure Monitor family of services as data sources. It builds you only on active usage in terms of the actual user visits to the Grafana service in a given month. And it's ideally suited for dev and test scenarios. We are also releasing the latest version of Grafana, Grafana 10. You can now opt into this new version and get access to a slew of new features and enhancements that comes with this major release. And of course, as a service, we're constantly adding new improvements to the service, including things like being able to team sync with intra or AAD groups, uh, as well as new visualizations. Uh, and uh, my coworker here, uh, Coyote, is going to give you a demonstration of the new application insights tracing that comes with Grafana version 10. Now over to you, Coyote. Thanks, Yi. So in this demo, we're gonna walk through 
a new support for application inside traces in Grafana out-of-the-box trace visualizations. This is now enabled with Grafana 10. So once you're using Azure Managed Grafana version 10, you have access to this capability. So before we jump into the demo, I'll just take a quick look at the data sources that we'll use here to monitor our AKS clusters all up. The first is our Azure Monitor data source, and this is going to give us access to Azure Monitor platform metrics, Azure Monitor logs, as well as Azure Resource Graph queries, including the ability to visualize alerts. And then we have our Prometheus data source for Azure Managed Prometheus metrics. What we're introducing with our new application insights traces support is the ability to query traces from App Insights using the Azure Monitor plugin and view those traces in Grafana visualizations. So I'll start off with one of our existing out-of-the-box dashboards for monitoring application insights in Grafana. In this dashboard, you simply choose your Azure Monitor data source, the subscription, the resource group, and the App Insights resource. The dashboard here is divided into four main columns a column to view the usage, so the number of users and the availability results for your app, the reliability, covering failures and exceptions, performance, server response time, resource consumption, like memory and CPU usage, and then finally, a breakdown of the number of page views and a page time breakdown. This is typically where you'd start in your application insights monitoring in Grafana. But in addition to these, metrics and log-based charts, what we're introducing is the ability to view your traces directly in Grafana. So I'm going to switch to Explore to show this. And under our service dropdown, we have metrics, logs, and the new addition, traces. So to use traces, you point your resource selector to an App Insights resource. In this case, I'm going to choose our demo resource here called our Retail App. And now I'm going to run a query to say, pull back all of the traces from this App Insights resource for the last 30 minutes. Now, this query is going to return a table. And each of the rows in this table represents a trace where we can do a couple of things. The first is we can click on a trace ID to explore the trace directly within Grafana, take a look at the parent span, or have a redirect to the Azure portal to view this trace in App Insights or to view the trace in Log Analytics. In addition, you can filter the set of traces returned by this query by choosing the particular table in App Insights that you'd like to start with, including dependencies, custom events, exceptions, or page views. And you can add filters for the subset of traces you'd like to query. An example here might be show me traces only for a particular application name, a cloud role instance, or cloud role name, and that's going to filter my traces. Now, this is the first step of getting to the subset of traces that you'd like to troubleshoot. And if I click on the Explore visualization for one of these traces, this is going to open the trace directly within Grafana Explorer. So I'll go ahead and do that to explore a trace. And this will open a split screen window. So on the left side, I have my initial query. And on the right side, I'm passing the operation ID that I clicked on on the left into the trace query wizard. And by passing in that operation ID, we're getting the results for that trace in the Grafana trace visualization within Explore, allowing me to see all of the span details and span attributes for each of the components of that trace. Now, the way these traces work to help you do troubleshooting is by identifying where in an overall transaction I'm spending my time. So this mini view at the top shows me the total time for the transaction. And then for each of the dependencies, the put, the post, the get, the backend call to the database, I can see the subset of time, the duration for each of those dependency calls, and how it contributes to my overall response time. Now, in this flow, I've been looking at my traces from a top-down sort of manual troubleshooting, filtering, and isolating the individual trace. But we give you a number of out-of-the-box dashboards for you to get started to view your trace. So let's take a look at, at our out-of-the-box App Insights dashboard. 
and point out the new dashboards that we're shipping with Grafana version 10. In the top right, we have two links for performance-related dashboards and failure-related dashboards. And I'll do this trace demonstration starting with performance. Okay, so just like we said before, up top we have some variables for selecting the subscription resource group and app insights resource. But after those selections are done, we can now start troubleshooting. Uh, first, we can take a look at the server response time, typically very low, but we see a spike in response time for both my max and my 95th percentile. Probably interesting. We can do some visual correlation to see how that spike in response time corresponds to a spike in load with the total number of requests. Time. And then we can also see some distributions of performance, both in a histogram as well as a heat map, to let me know that most of my transactions are performing well, a response time that's very small down in the 10 millisecond range, but I have some outliers that are very high. So we can click and sweep to highlight that spike, and that's going to update all of my other dashboard panels to focus just on that interesting time period. And then we'll make a selection on the left here to pick just one transaction type, in this case, the home transaction, and that's going to filter all of the panels on the right hand of the screen so we can see only the slow home transaction. I'll then sort by response time to show just the slowest home transactions, and that's how we can use this dashboard to quickly filter down by a time period of interest, a transaction name of interest, down to an individual trace where when I click on the operation ID, it's going to open in our out-of-the-box trace viewer. So that passes the operation ID on which I clicked, as long as the as well as the app insights resource, and it's going to execute a trace query where I can see the total response time of my entire transaction and what are the contributing factors to the delay within the Grafana trace viewer. Thanks. I'll pass it back over to you. Thank you, Coyote. Here we have a set of resources that you can use to learn more about the various things that we presented in this session. I want to thank you again for joining us for this .NET Conf session.